In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join, Join Apostle, Apostle Joshua, Joshua Selman of Eternity Network, Network International, International as he takes you on a journey into the wisdom of God's Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia. down. Lift your voice and bless his name. Everywhere lift your hands and let's worship the King of Kings. Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Bless him for tonight. And say, Holy Spirit, break every wall, every wall of limitation. Break every wall down. In the name of Jesus, break every wall down. Are you praying from the depth of your heart? Break every wall down. Break every limitation in my life down. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Break every wall down in the name of Jesus. Outside, are you praying? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we are gathered before you tonight. We are here because we believe in you. We are here because we trust you. We are here because we want to know you. We are here because you are our helper. This is the place of strength. This is the place of wisdom. This is the place of power. This is the place of miracles. This is the place of encounters. This is a place of transformation. So Lord, we thank you. For you are bigger than what we say. You are better than what we say. You are bigger than what we say. You are bigger than what we say. Hallelujah. Bless our hearts tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Walk to 10 people, greet them, tell them it's good to see you. And then back to your seat. There is a sweet anointing in There is a stillness in the atmosphere Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary, God is here. That's already a prophetic word for someone tonight. There is a sweet 
Anointing in the sanctuary There is a stillness In the atmosphere Oh, come lay down The burdens you have carried For in the sanctuary For in the sanctuary, God is here. For in the sanctuary, God is here. God, you are here, and we thank you. Change our lives tonight. In the name of Jesus. Good evening, everybody. Um, I have a very serious word for us tonight. It's, it's actually an explanation. We are to start a new series, but the Spirit of God would not let me start a new series. There is a key that I taught in this place that the Lord wants me to teach it again. Because we need to understand it. Again and again the Holy Spirit kept pressing on my spirit. That we ought to understand. Some mysteries must be taught. Again and again and again. Until our spirits pick them. Are we together? The end of revelation. Is that we apply these truths. And they produce results in our lives. And so I'm going to be challenging us on that thought. And then we will pray. One of the greatest prayers you can pray as a believer is that the eyes of your understanding truly be enlightened. Are we together? The eyes of your understanding is not intelligence. The eyes of your understanding is not intellect. The eyes of your understanding is not philosophical knowledge. The eyes of your understanding is access to the mysteries of the spirit alongside their operation you can know that these mysteries exist you see revelation is not knowing what god has said revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life knowing what god has said is not revelation when you know how to make it work in your life he told job nowhere thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth amen it's important that when we come into god's presence we listen you will think that when people come into god's presence like this the fact that you are looking at me it doesn't mean you are listening are we together people can be distracted people can be careless some can be looking with their eyes open but they are sleeping are we together all kinds of things happen it was jesus himself that told us what happened to seeds some fall by the wayside correct seed correct sower some fall by the wayside some fall in the midst of thorns some fall on a rocky ground even among the good soils three kinds of results 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold may you be a hundred fold tonight in the name of jesus christ a day will come in your life where you would have sufficiently gained access to the mysteries of the kingdom alongside the keys that release their power. And let me tell you, when that time comes, you will be nothing short of a wonder. Everybody around you will know that the finger of God is upon your life. We make impact in this world through mysteries. We make impact in this world not through desire. It takes more than desire to make true impact for the kingdom. I'll share a thought with us and then we'll walk on a scripture and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. 
I shared with us here, for those of us who were not here, please listen attentively. And by the way, those following us online, we love you, we honor you, you are part of us. That there are three platforms upon which impact is established. Please listen. When God is ready to reveal himself to a man, when God is ready to do business with a man upon the earth, there are only three platforms as revealed from scripture upon which that man will access capacity to make impact. Platform number one, encounters. Don't forget this. They are not cheap. They are not basic at all. Encounters. The first platform that grants a man access to walk with God is encounter. Everybody say encounter. Encounters are very, very important because they birth spiritual realities in our spirits. By encounters, I don't just mean visionary encounters. Even encounters through the word. An experience that makes God real to you. An experience that makes a dimension of God real to you. It could be aided through a vision. It could be aided through a supernatural experience. But regardless of what platform it comes through, any experience capable of making a dimension of God become real to you is called an encounter. True encounters produce conviction. Not memory, conviction. A true encounter, listen, it doesn't just leave you with a memory. It produces conviction. If you tell me you've had an encounter with a dimension of God, I will know. I don't care whether you claim you had a vision or a scripture opened up to you. When it is opened up to you, the first sign that you had an encounter is unusual conviction. It translates to faith. If God gives you an encounter of his healing power, it produces conviction. If God gives you an encounter of a dimension of spiritual reality, it must come with conviction. Say conviction. There are so many people in the body of Christ who are not convicted about the things they teach. It's one thing to teach from a theological standpoint, and that's important. It's one thing to teach from a sociological standpoint, but it's one thing to teach from a depth of conviction. It's not by shouting. It's not the volume of your voice. It's not the, the repetition of your grammar. Conviction is a realm where your speaking, your listeners know that the things you are saying are true with you. Say encounters. We must crave for encounters. You know, people who don't really understand this thing think that all we are advocating is that people begin to have out-of-body experiences. And they begin to propose as though you are telling people to not pay attention to the word of God. To now begin to contend for angelic encounters, heavenly encounters as above the word of God. No. The Bible says God appeared um, to Samuel in Shiloh by his word. Are we together? He appeared by his word. So an encounter doesn't necessarily mean until you see an angel. And he says, promise, I was sent from heaven to you. That from today you take the healing power of God to the nations. And then every time you stand, you say, I remember what the angel said. Yes, that's an encounter. But there are men like Reinhard Bonke who had encounters. They never had any visionary experience. When you listen to Reinhard Bonke's story, he will tell you that a day came, they brought in a great man of God to preach. The man preached the first day and told all the sick people to come by the second day. And the morning of the second day, Reinhard Bonke was excited because they were going to wheel all kinds of sick people. In Africa, if you tell people to bring the sick, they are obedient. They will bring the sick. Whether they are related to them or not, they will. that sense of nationhood will kick in. They will drag every sick person. And so they brought those people and the preacher told Reinhard Bonke, he said, the Lord told me to pack up my things and get out of this place. You will preach and you will heal. Renard Bonke said, no, 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 no. You can't be playing. I mean, you are the great man of God 
I'm only here to encourage you. And he said, I'm sorry, I have to be on my way. Reinhard Bonke said he cried and cried because his ministry was about to be shredded into pieces. And then all of a sudden, that's an encounter. The word of the Lord comes. You don't read it, it comes. In the fifth day of the fifth month of this, the word of the Lord came. There's the one you try to get, but the one that comes is what produces encounter. And Renard Bonke just looked and said, Lord, I will go and do the preaching and you will do the healing. And that was it. A man who has produced a ministry that has liberated Africa. Encounters. You can be reading a scripture. You can be reading John 3.16. But one day the word of the Lord will come to you. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him when that encounter comes you can sing songs like yes Jesus loves me you sang it in Sunday school it was not an encounter it was a recitation but when it comes as an encounter you will sing that song and you are crying and somebody looks at you and says ah, ah, you are deeper than this and he said that's the point it has not come to you, but it came to me. Are we together? Encounters. My life is a testimony of encounters. I can point to you exact periods in my life where certain things happen that birthed certain convictions that have been responsible for releasing certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities. May God give us encounters. The meeting is called koinonia and the first thing you should get is an encounter if you are a prayer leader without an encounter a pastor without an encounter an apostle a prophet whatever you call yourself a time will come your lack of assurance will become evident to those you are leading are we together it's not by bold face bold face is not encounter i know god will show up please encounters produce convictions unto death but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded say god give me encounters say it again god give me encounters you believe god has called you into the ministry of kingdom wealth but you are not sure you don't have encounters so you are hoping you will be rich to prove to people that you were called into the ministry of kingdom financing you lack encounters listen an encounter makes your conviction as your primary evidence not physical results your conviction becomes your primary evidence so god can call you to the nations as at the time you are speaking the only other listener is your wife but you still say god called me to the nations i love men of convictions conviction conviction we we live in a result driven a carnal result driven generation where until you produce physical results that can be seen people oftentimes will not believe you so you will need encounters let me tell you so that when things do not happen the way you want you are still left with your encounter job said though he slay me yet will i trust him i know him the god in the mountain is still god in the valley let me tell you why many people gas out many pastors many preachers i've seen a lot of preachers say god sent me to so 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 city when the city became too hot and whipped them they left quietly encounters give you stamina encounters give you stamina encounters give you stamina he said if you turn aside in the day of battle he said your strength is small one guy came and met me one time and he said god has called him into the apostolic ministry i said congratulations a few months later it became too hot for him and he came back he said i get it now i'm an evangelist i said go. i told him i said go for a retreat a retreat that produces an encounter because he thought it's just in a name usually when it becomes too hot people change persecution 
we think the name will give you access for preaching fast so you say i am prophet a and b and c and then the heavy controversy that lands on your head you quietly remove it and say i am pastor joshua selman <laughs> say encounters may god give us encounters one big secret in my life is that God used encounters to convince me of my call. Solid encounters. Both visionary encounters, word encounters, prophetic encounters. That's why no matter what anybody says or does, I will never even pray about it. That's how certain I am. When you try to explain things to people, you don't have conviction enough please talk to someone by your side and say get conviction get conviction strong conviction are we together strong conviction we doubt and we fall by the wayside and we make a mess of and you know it's a terrible thing to brag so much before people and then you are now forced to defend your advocacy but the encounter that will sponsor your confidence is not there. If I believe God has called me to carry the healing anointing and there are hundred wheelchairs and I pray for them and nobody gets healed, I tell them, may God bless you and uh, have a nice day. And I'll go to sleep. And someone says, but man of God, ah, it's either you are backsliding or something has happened. I will go back and challenge myself to rise greater. But I will not go back saying, God, if it's that I didn't hear you well, can you explain to me again? No. We're laughing, but I'm, I'm trusting that God is speaking to us. Encounters. Do you know that the world follows men of conviction? If I am a thief today, there is a, there is a certainty about my stealing that will force you to say, look, this guy knows what he's doing. He's worth hearing terrorists are men of encounter and conviction they have met spirits the spirits told them certain things so while the government is trying to advise them and say why don't you become nice social beings they say all of you are confused and we are out to kill you and bomb you and you say are you sure you'll do this yes what of your life what of your wife and your family and they say to hell with them conviction from an encounter what encounter do you have that sponsors your confidence oh i saw god give a jimmy this it's not enough reason you must have a personal encounter we lack this a lot i'm taking out time to help you understand this we lack this a lot in the body of christ you can borrow joshua selman's revelation listen to one koinonia message and just write everything out and preach in a conference and say god said there is this and that and that but you know there is a way people look through you and they see that even you as you are preaching you are just saying lord i hope i'm right i'm about to pray joshua Selman prayed after that message and now i'm about to pray after my own then you stand and speak and say i see angels everywhere whether or not you are seeing them because you thought i was lying so now you say i see angels overflow are you ready say yes no encounter that's how preachers disgrace themselves convention after convention till everybody in your circle stops bringing you for meetings because you have a track record of copying with no results someone can guide you but the ultimate journey is that you meet christ you meet him not just theologically but you have an encounter. Say amen. amen. It's good to know the God of Joshua Selman. But stay until that God becomes your God. The people told the woman, the, the Samaritan woman, he said, we believe you now, not just because you told us. We have seen him for ourselves. You came and introduced us, but ah, talking with him, he did something to us. In the name of Jesus, may God give us encounters over your business, over your life, over your family, so that when you go and you look at your CGPA 
and you look at it from 4.5 god forbid but you drop to 3.5 and you see three carryovers you don't suddenly say ah and god said i'll be a leader god you must come and you see some prayers are are revelations of the doubts you've been nursing for many years so what you have feared secretly now comes upon you and you say god but you told me now you told me eh? you told me that this brother will marry me this one that he has done introduction what are you saying don't make noise until you have the burning bush experience we brag too much on hearsay I watch preachers talk sometimes and I'm saying, be careful, oh, Jesus is Lord, but his Lordship is exercised with wisdom and understanding. If you are not healed in this meeting, except I'm not called. Hey. At the end of the meeting, only two people are healed. Encounters. Encounters. I crave for them. I create the atmosphere for them. I desire them in my life. Encounters. It's not about reading the Bible, Genesis to Revelation. It's not about quoting scripture as important as it is. It's not about a display of Greek and Hebrew words. Encounters produce convictions. Convictions produce faith. Faith moves mountains. It's not what you do. It's the conviction behind what you do. Number two, the second platform upon which men do business with God is a comprehension or access to the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. An encounter is one. You meet a person in an encounter but you must comprehend the principles of the kingdom is God helping us tonight your knowledge of the principles the working knowledge of the principles of the word of God is another platform for you to activate a life and a destiny of impact so what principles do you know it says and I will give you the keys right and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven king james says whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven amplified says whatever you allow whatever you disallow the power to release realities and the power to close doors is called the key of david your life there is a dimension of impact in your life hear me brothers and sisters that is a product of the mysteries that you know this is what i define as dominion you've heard me say it again and again dominion is not an impartation dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom we've spent this year as much as many other years dissecting these mysteries under the teaching secrets of the kingdom the series get it secrets of the kingdom right i taught you six mysteries that control mighty dramatic manifestations upon the earth mystery number one i taught you is the law of surrender the law of surrender that this is the mystery that holds the key to unusual amounts of unction upon the lives of people complete surrender complete surrender Mystery number two is the power of a transformed mind. For as he thinketh in his heart, right? So, he's, so he is. I told you realities are first formed in the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical realm. So you never try to change anything by physically trying to alter it. You alter it from the realm of the spirit and it changes. Mystery number three is the law of competence. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He says, He shall not stand before mean men, he shall stand before kings. Are we together? We we did this very, very mystery number four. I explained to you the secret of coming out of situations that are about to swallow you in all your ways. Acknowledge him 
and he will make straight your path. That's what the Bible says. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. A time must come in a man's life where you face challenges that are bigger than your current level of exposure. You don't know anything about that challenge, nor how to go out. At that time, the key is to acknowledge him. He says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Praise is a weapon for acknowledgement. So as you begin to acknowledge him, there is a promise attached. He said, he will make straight your path. Mystery number five is the mystery I call it the irrefutable mystery of destiny helpers. Men and women anointed, commanded, instructed to appear in your destiny and take you to the next level. I'm doing a recap. It, it, please, I don't know how to plead with you. Believe what I'm teaching you and understand it and you will change your life. There are three kinds of destiny helpers. I shared with us the other time number one they are called divine connectors they do not have the ability to help you but they can link you to where your help is divine connectors number two men of influence they have the capacity both the economic power both the governmental power right the intellectual prowess to endorse you and open up doors for you an example of such a person is Joseph of Arimathea. A man who, through his influence, Jesus was ordered to come down from the cross and buried in a tomb. You need them. And then number three, faithful men. The third kind of destiny helpers, faithful men. 400 of these men came to David. David was running, he was a failure, he was broke, he was on his way, ministry had packed up, but 400 men came and they entered a covenant with themselves to be loyal to him until he became king. And then the last mystery, which in my opinion is the most powerful, maybe secondary to only an encounter, is the law of honor. Hebrews 7.7 7, And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the greater. I told you that there is a system in the body of Christ. Nobody blesses himself. You cannot lift yourself to a new dimension. Are we together? No matter how anointed you are, no matter how great you are, at every point in your life, there are people below you trusting God for your grace to lift them. There are people above you there are those who already represent what your future aspirations are. And there are people who you represent their future aspiration. The recognition of that is the key to living where you are to the next level. You ignore the law of honor, you will pay for it dearly. You ignore the law of honor, you will pay for it dearly. There are human beings that represent systems. The recognition of what they represent alongside the possibilities God has opened unto them will bring you into their realm of reality. Honor is the key to access. Every time a door closes over your life, dishonor closed it. And every time a door opens over you, honor opened it. So there are many other mysteries that we have to learn. I can teach you mystery upon mystery upon mystery. One of it is he that wants friends must first show himself friendly now you read these things as verses until god opens your eyes then you will see the reason why many people never have the gift of men because they are not friendly to be friendly does not mean to be a clown to be friendly means to be hospitable are we together it says that you neglect not being hospitable for in it many have entertained angels unaware it was through hospitality Sarah trapped the angels and they gave a revelation about the inevitable doom of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it was on the strength of that hospitality that Abraham was given access to that mystery and with it he rescued Lot. Praise the Lord. The third platform upon which men receive from God and create lives of notable impact in the earth 
is covenant connection. Covenant connection. Covenant connection. May God make us believe what I'm sharing. May God make us believe it. May God make us believe it in the name of Jesus Christ. Covenant connection. The Bible speaking about men and describing the nature and the character of their success says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the, sin, the seat of the scornful. He says, but his delight, what? Is in the law of the Lord. And on that law he meditates day and night. Then he says, he shall be. This is how his success will be. In the similitude of that of a tree. If the Bible says you shall be like something, study that thing. It says the success of a believer will be like that of a tree. How does a tree rise? Number one, it is planted. From the stem that rises, branches begin to come. All branches do not move in the same direction. But regardless of their direction, the strength of the branches are determined by the strength of the vine that they are connected to. They may face different directions and the trees can grow so tall, taller than buildings. And the trees can stand for years and decades. Branches fall and rise. They are pruned and they come again. But the stem connected to the root remains intact. Any branch that cuts itself outside of the vine dies. You don't water the branches. You water the roots. And it has a system. Are we together? Trying to pour water on leaves is a waste of time. A system. So he said he shall be like a tree. Listen. Our personal spiritual growth is based on relationship. But kingdom advancement is based on covenant. Please you have to understand this. Our personal work with God is based on relationship. However kingdom advancement is based on covenant. Not the covenant of Moses. Not the covenant of the New Testament. I'm not talking old and new covenant. A covenant is a system through which God guarantees a continuity of his program. Now listen, listen, look up please. Let me teach you this. Get it, get it in the name of Jesus Christ. The way the kingdom works is through the principle of covenant and alignment. Please listen. So what happens is that every dispensation has a dimension of spiritual realities that they should experience which is part of the ongoing unfolding of the multifaceted dimension of god are we together so every dispensation has a dimension of god earmarked for them to experience but the nature and the character of that revelation is such that when god wants to come in in a dimension to a territory and a dispensation his first assignment is to find a man say a man when he finds a man he enters a personal covenant with that man that personal covenant becomes the platform upon which that dimension of god is revealed to the dispensation no other person will access that dimension in that dispensation out of alignment to the person in covenant with god are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. God will not reveal the same thing to everybody. He will reveal the same thing to one person and direct every other person who wants to experience that part of him to align with the covenant that he has had upon that man or upon that system. Are we together? The yardstick that he uses to bring men to that experience is called an election of grace it has nothing to do necessarily with their personal yieldedness it is part of his sovereignty and his predeterminate counsel so god calls men every time you are talking about redemption the journey of redemption and the doctrine of christ starts from abraham not noah not adam are we together 
whether it's Christianity, whatever kind of religion, the moment they are communicating the doctrine of Christ, the genesis of the blueprint of the doctrine of Christ starts from Abraham. God called one man to come out of a place called Or of the Chaldeans, Genesis chapter 12, right? He wanted to use his father, Terah, but something happened. And he, the, the, you know, the baton passed on to Abraham and he called Abraham an idol worshiper out of all of the Chaldeans. And he called him and he said, look, I am calling you out. Come out of your father's house, your kindred and all of that. And I will do certain things with you. And Abraham obeyed him. There are so many people in the Bible that represents God's covenant point. There are portals that open their dispensation and their generations to certain dimensions of God. That law did not die with the coming and the going of Jesus Christ. There are still men today that represent new dimensions of God or continuity of his program. Hmm. Are we together? Alongside your encounter, alongside your comprehension of the laws of the spirit, your covenant connection to men or systems that represent the continuity of God in that dimension. But this is where Satan cheats a lot of people. Please listen to me carefully. This is something else I'm talking about, but we need to understand this. God asked me to reiterate these things. You know why we honor men? We honor men for many reasons. Number one is the anointing they carry. Number two, the sacrifice that they have with God that has brought certain levels of possibilities in their life. Number three is the spiritual system that they represent. When David wanted permission to fight Goliath, do you know the question Saul asked? He said, whose son is this? In other words, I want to know the tribe he came from so that I know whether this can be possible. This boy is too young. I'm a king. But I need to know where he's coming from. So we can trace the history of the spiritual deposits God left with that tribe. And when they found out that David was of the Benjamites, he said, go and fight. David came to him and he said, Goliath, I know you think I'm a small boy. But there is a tribe standing before you, not a person. Watch what happens to you now. Goliath said, am I a dog? David said, we will we'll see who, who is the dog. I have seen people in my life who never become billionaires, but they never lack whether they pray or not. Even when they are not tithing, it's a covenant. There is something they are connected to, whether they know it or not, that affords them those spiritual possibilities. <sighs> Open our eyes, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I have seen pastors who when they stand to teach he will almost sleep but when they call upon the God of heaven he shows up it's not personal encounter in fact many of them may have a lot of character defaults and while you are talking about their character it's like God owes them his presence they call him and he must show up there is a covenant he respects he says my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my mouth are we together so some of our people although they were in the village with witchcraft they had 16 children one woman 16 children and yet after 16 children the woman is still standing her stomach is still as flat as an arrow you wonder whether the children grew in a basket it's a covenant brothers and sisters it's not about knowing what drug to take some things are spiritual when they are spiritual they show and you see it Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Hmm. Oh, you better believe it. So that when you look at a man, you know that not every result you see was initiated by his personal altar. When you know that, there will be no room for pride when God begins to give you result. Because you will know that certain dimensions of your result are purely an issue of alignment. Purely an issue of what? Alignment. Spiritual alignment. There was a time, for instance, in living faith, it still happens, where there were strange testimonies, 2005, 2006, creative, 
those ones where it's what the Bible calls the walking of miracles, not testimonies. Where a man will tell you, I was a cleaner, and by Sunday, the owner of the company said he's leaving Nigeria and they made me a CEO. Strange testimonies. So you see somebody who drag himself and he's sleeping while they are preaching. Sleeping. They say in Jesus' name, he never says amen. He's even angry. But something still came on him. With the anger, he turns and he leaves and goes back and the landlord says, you are staying five years in this house. The rent is, is free. And the man says, I don't understand what is happening to me. Two weeks later, they call him and say, there is a job we want to give you. And he says, I don't understand. There is a covenant. When God looks at you, he sees the covenant. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. If you know this thing I'm teaching you, you can, you can make, it's not a license to sin. You can make the worst blunder on earth. Quarter to shame. The covenant kicks in. And God says, I remember. <sighs> Jonah! Jonah was running as a rebel. But God used what happened to describe what will happen to Jesus. Jonah! He says the same way Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Was that a good testimony? Yet Jesus used it. God had Solomon for the sake of his father, David. When Solomon dedicated the temple, he lifted the temple and he said, Lord, I enter a covenant with you that whoever faces this temple and pray, whether their faith level is there or not, hearken to them. So in the days of Daniel, they signed a policy and they said nobody should pray. Daniel knew that if he will use his personal faith, he's a human being. The truth about it is that it was not just his personal spiritual life. So he opened the window to Jerusalem and he started praying. And listen, that was why he was sure when they were about to throw him in the lion's den. God did not show up because of Daniel. He showed up because of the covenant. What have you enjoyed in your life because of covenant connection? Some of us, every good thing that has happened to you has come because of your, your personal push, which is good. But brothers and sisters, the demand that life will place on you will be greater than your spiritual life. And if you have to wait till you become strong, you may not even live for that to happen. There are people in Koinonia here, they are not tithing, but they are having strange results. They, even them, they are doubting, they are saying, what's wrong? Something is covering you. It's a covenant. Break every chain. Break every chain. Those who know this do business with God upon the earth and open strange doors. Strange doors. Strange doors. Living faith redeemed and MFM. There are three ministries that have seen them with such a strange covenant of, of ownership. They can enter any land regardless of the vow the government made not to give them land. They must give them land as much as they want. It's a revelation. Are we together? Brothers and sisters, some things are not just about fasting and prayer. There is an advantage God placed in the body. And if you are not aware of it, you may never step into certain dimensions. Never step into certain dimensions. I came to show you certain things. God said I should teach it again. If God says I should teach it, it means many of us did not get it. There are certain things in my life I will, I will never suffer and struggle over. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that foolish. I am not that foolish. You see, it's a painful thing when you are suffering certain things that is available by covenant to the tribe you belong to. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yeah. 
Break every chain. Elijah was a man who had a covenant with God that represented the system of the prophetic and the apostolic. He had other sons called the sons of the prophet. Is that true? But he had a strange man who was a farmer called Elisha. Elisha was not a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. He casted his mantle upon him and Elisha started following him. Join other prophets. Listen. And then the Bible says a time came when Elijah, Elijah it was about to go to heaven. Is that a normal human being? Is that how you go to heaven? But that's how he went to heaven. That's how you know that it's not a normal human being. He knew where the gate of heaven was. Beyond the Jordan. He said, I'm about to leave. He knew where to wait for the chariots. Ah. A man was taking fresh air on a mountain. And they came to harass him. He used one of the elements of the supernatural called fire. He said, I will not just use my mouth. If I be a man of God, let fire come from heaven. He prayed once and fire came. Is that how you pray when you stand? Look at what... He, hi. Koinonia, hear what I'm teaching you. Listen. When they were about to judge the prophets of Baal, there are some dimensions of witchcraft that is your covenant of connection that dislodges them. Not just your personal prayer and fasting. When the prophets of Baal were there, they were prophets under the custody of Jezebel. And look at the mockery. Elijah said, laugh. He said, he said, cut yourself, shout. Maybe your God is sleeping. Look, if I am Elijah, I will be fasting. <laughs> Deliver me, O oh God. Wipe my tears. For the sake of your glory. I will be writing out the worship songs. Looking for somebody to play a cymbal. But here was a man crossing his leg. And mocking at them. From morning till evening he laughed. Because he knew they were wasting their time. After everything. They caught themselves. So that their God will see blood. And remember their covenant with him. When they tried singing and praising and it did not work. They danced around the prophets of Baal. They started bringing blood. What is blood? The covenant. Baal, remember our covenant as prophets with you. And Elijah shut the heavens and said, keep calling on him. Then when it was time for Elijah, I thought Elijah would have just said, all right, God, fire, come down. He would have been surprised. He said, give me 12 stones. 12 stones. Listen, listen, let me teach you something. The Bible says in the New Jerusalem, it said the gates of the city, there were 12 gates, and the gates had a name of the 12 tribes of Israel. Every one of those tribes represented a dimension of God, and 12 foundations having the name of the apostles. He said, Give me 12 stones. And the prophets of Baal were watching. After it, he put a sacrifice, and then he said, Pour water. The water was a mystery. He was not just trying to say so that you don't think I hid fire. Because there are three forces that open the gates in this earth realm. The spirit, the water, and the blood. So he said, pour water. Afterwards, he lifted his eyes to the heaven. The pattern was correct. Follow me. And he said, oh God. And the fire, the Bible said the fire came, licked the sacrifice, and swept everything right and then hear what he said the moment that happened he said pursue all the prophets of Baal don't let one escape and kill them hear me people of God there are dimensions there are kinds of mountains that were never designed to be approached alone we fool ourselves thinking because we know God every mountain will just go like that he said, all things are possible, but they are, they are possible based on the knowledge available to you. If you can see me as I'm going, you will have something. The moment he left and he held the mantle, he would have gone to the well and said, I am a man of God. Pat, he would have been surprised. He said, where is the Lord God? As far as God was concerned, he did not see Elisha. He saw the covenant. Did the water obey? Absolutely. Do you know why Joshua was successful? God transferred a mystery to him. As I was with Moses, as I was, the way I related with him, so I will relate with you. 
he said and because of that no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life so when the angel appeared joshua removed his knife and he was going to kill the angel the angel had to explain he would have died the word of god would have killed the angel not the sword of joshua he said are you for us or against us and the angel said hold on neither he had to explain because a man was running with the word of god The Bible says, for instance, it says where two or three are gathered, where? In my name. The meaning is as touching my authority. There is a dimension of God that only shows up under corporate fellowship. You will never have that dimension alone in your room. Fast for 100 days. You will not see those things. That was why the psalmist was crying. He said, early will I seek you. He said, to see your power and your glory in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary. There's something I've seen that only happens when believers gather. I've not seen it. Can you make it happen in my life? Hallelujah. He says, if two of you shall agree, hold my hands, Jimmy, as touching anything, there are certain levels of prayer that is not just about, I am alone, the veil has been torn, I, I'm, I'm alone, I can access Christ. It's a system. There are certain levels of difficulty that when two or three agree, you can just say one prayer. That was why the apostles, when they were threatening them, did they pray individually? Acts chapter 4. Remember they came together because they understood this. It took that kind of grace to bring the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. They could not pray alone and have the Holy Spirit come. So when the Bible says Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come. It said they were all gathered in one accord. That formation gave the Holy Spirit room to come. In Acts chapter 4 when they threatened them. They came together and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. He says, stretch forth your right hand now to heal. And that signs and wonders be wrought through your holy child. And the building shook. There is a difference between your personal prayer life and the body of Christ. The body of Christ is a mystery of possibilities. When you understand the mysteries that govern the body of Christ, you will do things that you will never imagine you would have done. Are we together? I remember when a few people wrote jam here. You were, you were testaments of the things. Marks being added. I'm not talking of those 40, 40 marks. You see people, someone will check his jam, 197. Go and check again, 231. How did that happen? Look, let me tell you something. When you see a man of God study the systems around his life, don't just say this person is anointed. Ah, he has power. What makes the heaven owe him? It's like, it's like God, God owes certain men of God a debt he must pay. Even if they call his name joking, he has to show up. There is something that makes that happen. My altar is calling you. Oh God. My altar is calling you oh god our covenant is calling you oh god take my praise oh god take my praise oh god sing it one more time my altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. It's calling you, oh God. Take my praise, oh God. Take my praise. Listen. Let me tell you something powerful. Numbers 24. Let me do my teaching now. Mike. Numbers 24. Let me share something with you 
that will break some gates open. I want your spirit to be sensitive. Something will happen in this place today. Numbers 24. Mm. Mambro setara kota shalabratika parata. Balaam was called by Balak to curse the nation of Israel. I've shared it here. The Lord asked me to repeat it, so I'm repeating it. Now listen. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, it's actually 23, 24. I'm jumping for time's sake. Follow the story. He went not as in other times to seek for enchantment. Now, there's a lot to say about Balaam. The Bible talks about the doctrine of Balaam, the error of Balaam, the way of Balaam. There is a long story on that. I don't want to go into that. But he set his face towards the wilderness. Let's rush it. Go ahead. And Balaam lifted his eyes. Balaam wanted to find out where... Listen, listen. Let me explain the whole scene for you. A prophet is brought by Balak. And he said, cause koinonia. Make things to start going wrong for people. Are we together? Now, Balaam tells them, Luko, I am a prophet. In other words, I don't speak the way I want. So as we stand here, whatever you hear me say, is what God is saying. Agreed? They said agreed. So they brought gifts. Balaam would have sought God by lifting his face to the hills. That's the key. Sammy said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. They know where their help comes from. But now Balaam used enchantment so that God would not be able to prophesy through him. Are you getting the story? He used divination to invoke spirits so that they would prophesy. So Balaam stood and after he used those enchantments, he was about to curse and his mouth produced blessings. And he was surprised. He moved to another place again and used invocations about to speak and he blessed them. He went to another place about to speak and he blessed them. And Balaam said, ah. Balak was angry. And he said, what is all this? I brought you to curse them. All that has been coming out of your mouth is blessings. Please watch this. And Balaam lifted his eyes to check. They were on a mountain. And he said, no, I'm a prophet. Let me look. What is the reason why no cause is working? And this is what he saw. Hallelujah. And he saw Israel abiding in what? His tents. There was a spiritual formation from the valley. Israel were wise people. They didn't just say, let's rest. They said, ah, it is possible that the kings will come and destroy us. So let us engage the formation. There is a pattern. Oh. They arranged themselves according to their tribes with the ark of God being at the center. And they said, let's see who will curse us. They kept the ark there. So when Balaam stood at the mountain to curse, the ark fought him back. And he said, I don't know what is wrong. I can't curse them. I can't curse them. Then listen to what he said. According to their tribes, and finally the spirit of God came upon him. This is what he said. The secret. And he took a parable. That's how prophets, remember Hosea chapter 12? I have spoken in similitudes or parables. I have multiplied visions. He took a parable and he said, Balaam, the son of Beor, had said, speaking about himself, and the man whose eyes are open, talking about himself, had said, verse 4, and he had said, which heard the words of God, which saw the visions of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. Verse 5. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. That's the secret. I look at your tent and your spiritual formation, and I see you arranged in a way that no cause, no enchantment, that's why he said no divination, no enchantment against Jacob. It's not just because they are Christians. Please listen to what I'm teaching you now. There was a spiritual pattern. And literally, Balaam, as a true prophet, could not curse them. They didn't fight. They just could not curse them. When it was 10, in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 20, Oh, well, we read from verse 15 downwards if there's time. They were about to fight. Three kings came together to fight them. And the Bible said they had another formation. Kai. 
these guys use formations for victory not stories they inquired of the lord what pattern will produce the result and they said let the worshipers be in front and when the worshipers were in front together with the ark the warriors were behind he said this is not an issue of sword and they began to sing hearken all judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem and thou king jehoshaphat thus saith the lord be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but the lord's let's read down quickly tomorrow go up against them and so on and so forth 17. listen he said ye shall not what set yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the lord O judah and jerusalem fear not or be dismayed tomorrow you go up against them verse and joseph had bowed his head this and that and that verse 19 there's something i'm looking for now listen and the levites and the children of the Kohathites and of the children of all of those people stood up to what praise the lord of the lord god of israel with a loud voice on high right and then of course they rose early in the morning and then when they began to praise you know a prophecy came next verse he says and when he had consulted the people he appointed what look at the formation who did he appoint do you use musicians to fight war musicians to fight war three kings about to kill you i hope you know they were not acting it was real death but there was a pattern he says and they should praise the beauty of his holiness and as they went out before the army and to say praise the lord for his mercy endured forever what happened and when they began to sing and to praise the lord set ambushment against the children of ammon moab and mount seir which were come against judah and were smitten next verse for the children of this stood up to slay themselves read the last sentence if you're a christian want to read everyone help to destroy military people killing themselves there were two left and he said who dies first say you he now kill the other person and killed himself while they were doing that other people were there invoking a pattern listen there's something i teach the school of ministry students called the reflection principle listen i want to teach you something very powerful it's a principle that is used in occultism it's a principle that is used it was an an aberration of god's principle listen you only host a spirit and a dimension of the possibility of a spirit if you create the atmosphere for that spirit to feel at home as though it were in its primary place of habitation are you getting what i'm saying so if the ambassador of u.s comes to the u.s consulate office in abuja it was designed to accommodate him his appetites the colors the architecture are we together there is a pattern based on the ideology of the united states they built the embassy that way so whether he is in nigeria or he's in america it does not make any difference to him because the embassy in nigeria reflects the dexterity and the glory of america are we together now watch this if i want a spirit any spirit please give me this sir. sorry no if i want a spirit assuming i'm a herbalist i am not a herbalist assuming i'm a herbalist are we together and i want a spirit to come upon this i'm not just going to say spirit come spirit break out and then you think it will come no there is i must find out what that spirit is and the nature of its operation and the kind of atmosphere that makes it come and i will make this water become like the atmosphere the spirit must come atmospheres are magnets they draw spirits and they draw possibilities to the earth and to territories please listen to this this is very important so this is what the psalmist said the holy ghost wanting to come into the new creation he said a body has thou prepared
prepared you prepared it in such a way that when I come into that body it will be as though I am in heaven when the body was prepared the spirit could come and that body today is called the ecclesia the body of Christ it was built in a particular way Christ the foundation the apostolic and the prophetic and then the, it rises and he said that body you have prepared for me so God is able to function on earth because of the body that has been prepared for him are we together now when during our traditional festivals when they want to see certain spirits what do the masquerades do or the priest they wear a particular attire having a particular kind of animal skin alligator skin then some use snakes some use hyenas come on talk to me africa are we together so we have don't don't act as if you came from 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 the middle east we're here we're home amen they use fire they provoke these spirits they start chanting tongues and start moving in a particular direction they can move here small and come back again they can run and come back while they are doing that someone can be playing drums are we together and then at a particular point the snake will start coming out when the snake starts coming out they start dancing and putting fire because the snake is reflecting what is happening in the realm of the spirit so the gods are now coming the moment that happens what happens it's like people are under the anointing even the priests they are under their anointing they start doing crazy things they took fire in their mouth and nothing happens because a spirit landed let me tell you why it landed there was a pattern i counseled one man um on on tuesday on wednesday in abuja before i came he's one of the popular nigerian directors directors of nigerian film you know and all of that and he told me something he said man of god most of the Nigerian films you see us acting, the snake we use, they are real snakes. But what they do is they go to charmers. You know these guys are charm snakes. So they give them a particular ring so that they can pick the snake and nothing will happen. The ring has a pattern. It's a language the snake understands. That's why sometimes it backfires because those powers expire. They must be renewed. If at the point of expiration you are the one holding the snake, the snake that you were you were in nice romance which would turn and enjoy you immediately are we together patterns so there are men whose lives are patterns you curse them it returns back to you and you are wondering see it is on this basis that you can say i am uncursable now the problem with the church is we say revelations without we we make statements without the spiritual revelation that activates those possibilities i am uncursable in the name of jesus and you find out there's a cause at work in your life clearly everybody knows you are cursed i am not cursed you are cursed we are seeing it it is on the strength of this there is a pattern don't laugh are we together so someone can vow like they vow to paul and they said paul we will not eat nor drink until you are until you die and paul lived many years afterwards i'm teaching you something you can do on earth that is is like a spiritual formation that will make the Holy Spirit respond to you in a certain way and you will see doors open and you'll be wondering what happened is a pattern Balaam stood on the mountain and he saw the pattern and he said I can't cause them I'm trying I'm making efforts listen I can't tell you how many times on my way to travel people will call me and say apostle I just had a dream are you about to travel i say yes they say please sir don't travel i love you so much koinonia loves you i just had a dream this morning and in that dream i saw a plot and i saw that you had a ghastly motor accident and you died and then i said okay i appreciate now they are not they are not lying they saw it and what they saw was correct but there is a pattern kabarato satayaba David, I'm come and sing a song there, my spirit. Your influence is all over me, right? I'm under the 
and sisters when it comes to kingdom advancement don't just think of your personal spiritual life alone there are limitations to your personal spiritual life as far as kingdom advance is concerned there are certain strategies of witchcraft that it takes more than you as a person to conquer it's not that Christ is not king of kings and lord of lords please hear me is a law there are formations there are things that have been engaged that requires the strength of the body not your strength alone if you do not understand this you will have a lot of casualties and you will mock yourself spiritual patterns formations that make men forbidable on earth they wanted to curse you just like somebody from your village now wants to curse you and you have been saying in the name of Jesus I'm uncursable I agree with you potentially but you have to engage the mystery that makes your word valid otherwise you will be shouting I will not be cursed until they, they, they kill you like a chicken are we together please listen listen There are three of these spiritual patterns that I want you to learn tonight. I don't know if we can touch all three, but we'll stop somewhere and pray. The first of that pattern Listen, is the power of altars. An altar is a pattern. I'm not talking altar like coven. No. An altar is a token that represents a point where covenants are enacted. Every time a covenant is enacted, an altar is raised on earth as a memorial you see that all through in scripture every time people had covenants with god or with themselves they raised what altars an altar is nothing diabolic at all an altar is just a token it's a representation it doesn't even have to be physical a representation please listen a representation a platform that affords covenant to not only be renewed, not only be remembered, but to be activated. Three things happen on altars. Renewal. 
right continuity or servicing if you want to call it and then the third is activation spiritual realities are activated upon altars listen please listen every man of God every true ministry called of God has an altar they may not call it altar they may call it all kinds of things some call it covenant some call it altar I don't care what they call it but this is what it is it is a token that represents a covenant between God and that man and serves as a memorial the altar that was raised in the day of of um, Noah when he raised that altar there was a sign of a rainbow is that true and God gave this as a token when circumcision itself is a token I hope you know when you circumcise a child it's a revelation that was given to Abraham circumcise them Joshua circumcise them the power and the revelation of the patterns that altars create are things we should never take for granted especially in such a wicked world koinonia has an altar you hear us sing that song my it's nothing diabolic i don't mean babala or something no, that's not what i'm talking about as a person there are covenants that i've had through my encounters with god that have become the platforms upon which certain possibilities ride the same way I have gleaned upon the covenant of others with God and it has become an advantage it has boosted my personal spiritual life it has boosted the possibilities that I can see in my own life please hear me and I want you to be sensitive we're about to pray be very sensitive right now when Abel died when Cain killed Abel, what cried? Please answer me, what cried? And he said, the blood of Abel cries and the blood is speaking. Abel is dead. The blood is saying revenge. You have to bring vengeance upon Cain. And Jesus now says that even his blood too speaks. The only difference is that his blood speaks better things which were predicated on a better covenant. Are we together? There are altars that speak over the lives and the destinies of men. Please listen, listen, listen. I want to give you spiritual intelligence. You don't bind an altar. It was enacted by covenant. It's called the law of displacement. There are two lights. They keep shining until a greater light comes. Then it overshadows them. Are we together? These are spiritual laws. So many people do not know the foundation upon which their predicaments are coming. They think it's just an issue of personal retreat for three days. Have you seen people who are praying and fasting on the last day of the fast? What they were praying against is what happens. Maybe somebody sleeps with you in a dream and you charge and get angry and you go and say, look, three days, I'm praying. On the third day, drive fast. You are looking like a skeleton. You are about to break. You just decided to take a nap for the last 30 minutes and here the person comes. I said, your prayer made nonsense. In the prayer, you are shouting, Jesus, Jesus. And the person is just looking at you and say, keep shouting your Jesus there and comes to do exactly what he said to do. You know why I know this thing so well? Because it happened in my life. I've, you've heard my story. Wicked spirits will come and oppress me and come into my room. My own was not even an experience. I see them. They see me. But I couldn't do anything about it. Some of you say, I shouted Jesus. The pastor said, shout it well. You shouted it well. Nothing happened. Please, don't laugh. I'm giving you a mystery because we're about to pray. Are we together? We have lost the advantage of the patterns that God gave the body. 
it's not about an individual's personal success there are times when the secret to your breakthrough is based on alignment to covenants that god has had and he will respond to you and have respect for the covenant are we together there are people who have a covenant with god that every time they show up in a city there must be breakthroughs so they show up in a city to have a crusade and when they show up to have a crusade people who have no business with that crusade receive breakthroughs that have nothing to do with that ministry because for as long as that individual is there that territory has an advantage of tapping into the covenant that he has are you getting what i'm saying there are people who personally their prayer life is dead but when they get to the prayer department on tuesday to pray you find out that you who are struggling to pray for five minutes you now stretch for two hours is because something picked you that's why you can go back home and say ah, ah. so it is god's system to help you so that even when your spiritual life is down satan will still not be able to reach you before you come back to life there is a system that covers you altars that we can take advantage of there are men who when they come into a city you know everything shakes it's not by the loudness of the publicity but they come in with the presence they carry they come in with the covenants that they carry and you find out that there are strange results strange testimonies that happen to people and then they leave we'll find somewhere and stop i want to pray my life has changed like day and night because of this truth that I have discovered. I found it as a key because there were certain limitations in my life, though anointed, though a great man of God, though having encounters with Jesus. At a point in my life, there were certain mountains that would not move. There were certain doors that would not open regardless of what I did. And I said, Lord, but your word says, if I have faith like a monster seed, I know that I have faith. And then God began to teach me. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, many do sleep because they cannot discern the body. Their inability to discern the body that has been prepared to host the spirit. Everything is possible, but you need to know how to make it possible. You need to know how to make it possible. This night, looking at me and hearing me by the thousands, are men and women who have done certain things alone. You have struggled. Spiritually, you love God. You have held on to some of these principles. But the truth is that door has refused to open you have done what you know to do i show you the third key you must engage it's called the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants god has entered covenants with individuals he has entered covenants with systems please I can beg you some of you are looking for admission listen to what i'm telling you and get into school otherwise sit down there roaming around that you have 230 and repeat the same nonsense that has been going on some things in life will not move just by your personal faith do you know that when jesus was on earth he was not the only miracle worker please answer me is that true there was a time his disciples saw other people who were not in Jesus' camp, but they were still performing miracles. Not by Baal. Not Beelzebub. And they said, ah, Jesus, this is, this is strange. Ah, I thought you were the Savior. And he said, I paraphrase him. I came to introduce something new, but until the new comes, the old is still valid. There was a way miracles were done in the old covenant there were people who believed it there was a priesthood that made it possible for instance an angel would come and steer the water was jesus around when it happened no but it happened 
a particular prophet in the bible when a woman was sick or someone was sick he made herbs leaves and put it on the legs of the person are we together if you understand what i'm teaching you then you will know that when you stand and the mountains look like they are not you have done all you know to do listen stop trying harder the key is not harder the key is step back and look at the body of christ don't look at yourself again look at the body of christ what spiritual tribe is connected to the possibility that will open the door i'm looking for you can be a man of god full of grace and prayer but you know that there is no prosperity in your ministry and you are saying lord we have prayed we have fasted this prosperity thing is not working step back and look at the body of christ a body has thou prepared for me sometimes god can give you just one instruction go to any living faith branch hold what you have as a seed and go and sow it in that you don't even have to be prayed for the moment you pray for it you go back and god says fine what you have done is called alignment to a covenant and God begins to relate with you the same way he relates with God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. And you will find out mysteriously, mysteriously. Something happened recently. Somebody called me and they had a court case recently. And Ejimi, this court case, humanly speaking, was already against the person. There is no human way on earth he would have won that case. And when he called me, I said, tell me the truth. When he told me everything, ah, I said, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Because I, I, I know a bit about legalities. And I know that based on that thing, if he's to spend time in the prison, it will be nothing less than 10 years away from his wife and his children. But I told him, I said, well, I don't know what to tell you. But if you can believe what I want to tell you, there can be a way out. I told him, I said, I can pray for you. God has given me grace for territories and I want to pray for you. I prayed for that guy. Do you know I got to find out he didn't even show up on the day of, because of fear, he didn't show up in the court. He refused to show up. And later he would tell me that the judge looked and looked at everything and threw away the case from the court. Now, please, brothers and sisters, please, you went to school, you are intelligent. In Nigeria, who does that? <sighs> you reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on the other. You reign. You ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty. The Bible says Christ is the head of all principalities. He recognizes their existence. So he says your only advantage is that I am the head. Not that you say they are not there. No. It's your Bible. I'm teaching you spiritual intelligence. But many people say, assume they are not there are you kidding when they refuse jesus from entering back they say who is this king of glory he had to explain himself christ is the head of principalities he said he has been made above thrones so he recognizes them above dominions and every name that is named not only in this earth but in the world to come what do you not know that is responsible for the devil sinking through your life and making it look like God is not alive please hear what I'm saying a job will not just come because you think you're a Nigerian there are mysteries you have done there are many arrogant pastors in ministry who are suffering this they've done everything to do but the key is an alignment an alignment that opens up spiritual possibilities an alignment those who were in Mina, I'm sure maybe my friend Pastor Pete Rock is listening. Pete Rock, you know, I love House on the Rock and all of that. When we went to Mina, Aaron, you were there. 
the same thing you see in koinonia crowds here overflow on top and then outside is alignment brothers and sisters you may be a musician but you can align to a system that will give you more than songs you will find out that things are opening you are a student but you align to somebody who is paying you salary and they say no you must be sleeping with the man you say no i i, I just belong to a tribe that has a covenant with god that is respected even by hell let me tell you brothers and sisters what is not at work in your life is still available it takes humility and alignment many people will insult me for what i'm teaching you now because they will think i'm teaching you human worship god is my witness I, I i don't have time for all of those things but you have to be careful who you listen to don't let men do well meaning to deceive you there are systems on earth that represent spiritual possibilities you may argue it and never see certain things happen in your life please hear me look beyond your personal strength and look at the privileges that God has put in the body a body has thou prepared for me a body has thou prepared this koinonia that you look at every time maybe one day I will take out time and share the whole journey so that you will know that this is not just an ambition of a man to have a ministry if I want fame there are easier ways I'm not dull I can write books are we together? access to the riches and the blessings of heaven there are covenants you align with that will open you up to possibilities i don't want to begin to give you testimonies upon testimonies hallelujah we're already preparing to buy our land i will not tell you where it is until we buy it some of you will be surprised you will open your mouth and say it's a lie you can't get land like that a property that will swallow cgc how many times in this area because when you catch the keys listen 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 i don't say this to brag i'm challenging you it's, it's not by trying no door opens to shouting it opens to keys god is giving you something now you have been writing jam you are brilliant but it's not working don't stay foolish and say i i i know this time around i i got 250 no are we together possibilities there are men and women who God has put in the body of Christ in territories that's why Satan creates a lot of controversy around their life to fight them so that what you are supposed to receive will not be given to you but as we pray the devil is a liar somebody's door is about to be open rise up on your feet everybody and let's pray We are going to pray three prayer points and I want you to pray it with every, every ounce of strength. No carelessness, no looking around. You are going to cry to God. Prayer point number one. Lord, I acknowledge that I am limited as a person. No matter how spiritual I am. As a pastor, as an apostle, as a prophet, as a teacher. As an individual, I am limited and I come before you with every sense of humility, acknowledging my limitation. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I acknowledge. Lord, I acknowledge. I acknowledge that you have built a system. You have built a system beyond the personal spiritual progress of a man. You have designed this mystery called the body of Christ. This strategy called the body of Christ to lift men, to bail them out of captivity. You have designed this mystery called the body of Christ. Oh, 
Zenata, 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 Zenata. Bede basona balala 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 balala. Shumara na da ba ya da ba. Rapa katare keto se da brande shala balala 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 ba. Alleluia. Look up, please. Prayer point number two. I want you to be sincere before God. Mention all the things you know you have tried and done all you know to do but has not changed. Mention it before God because we are about to engage a mystery. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I have prayed over this failure in my family. Nothing has seemed to change. Outside, make sure you're praying. Those online, make sure you're praying. for himself so Jesus had to come and man's salvation now is tied to his alignment to the finished work of Christ it's a pattern there are times your victory will be based on the finished work of others not just of Christ but they have cried the cry for you so you don't cry again they have taken the scars for you so you don't take it again but if you do not know satan will cheat you there are times you will stand before that red sea please hear me just the same bar, please you stand before the red sea and the red sea will refuse to part you will you will invoke your personal altar it will not open let me tell you there are stubborn challenges like that in the life of a man. You will agree with your wife, your husband. It will not move. When all else fail, switch. Switch. 
remember what tribe you belong to remember the spiritual possibilities that come and say oh god of salvation remember 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 and all of a sudden your god will arise not for your sake listen hear me i don't know if it's a tight booklet of redeemed or living faith i can't remember which of them but there was a woman who had been a faithful titan i don't know if it's redeemed or living faith one of the ministries she testified and robbers came to her house and assassins to kill her and kill her husband they stepped into the house they were with guns the man was there his wife was there all that there was was to shoot and there was nothing to do the man just, he knew he was gone all else failed and all the woman did was to bring out her tight booklet and dropped it on the ground remember the covenant is it not your house that was built with my money is it not souls that are saved with my money don't waste your time trying to say one day god will come no that one day you can create it the day the pattern is there as powerful as jesus was his heavens were closed until he had to encounter a man the heavens of jesus did not open because he was called jesus it was open based on the covenant that came down to john the baptist and so when john the baptist saw jesus he said behold the lamb and he said that's not the issue my heavens are closed and he said suffer it to be so i can't neglect the pattern and when john dipped jesus and brought him out there was a transference and god responded the heavens opened and he said this is my beloved son please hear me it's not as hard as your life makes it look you just don't know what to do we are going to cry and say lord show me what i must do to come out of this challenge in my presence lift your voice and pray there is always something to do koinonia cry show me oh god what is the secret the missing link to my healing ministry the missing link to bring prosperity to my life. Who are thou mounting before Zerubbabel? There is a mystery, there is a pattern, there is a mystery, there is a pattern. Let hope rise. Darkness when losing your hope be light. Let hope let it rise. Let hope let it rise. Let it rise. Darkness when losing your hope be light. Hallelujah. Listen. We are going to pray. Please look up, everybody. We are going to pray. Just one more prayer and I will pray for us. I'd like you to pray. This ground, not I don't mean physical ground, but this mystery called koinonia is, is enshrined in strange covenants that are responsible for possibilities. Now please pay attention. We're about to pray strategic prayer. Are we together? I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I invoke the covenant that is upon this ministry the possibilities that your appearance the sacrifices are brought I invoke it upon my life pray
the covenant of open doors the covenant of his Shekinah glory access to kings access to strange favor pastors pray let it come upon my ministry oh God pray let it come upon my life say Lord, I've written this jam by my strength. I've tried and tried, but I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to make money by my strength. I've fasted, I've sown seed. I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to get a job. I've tried to get a job. It's not working. I cry to the God of heaven. Let hope, let hope, let it rise tonight. Let it rise tonight. The covenant of long life. The covenant of honor, strange honor, access to king. Access to nobles, access to royalties, access to power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you pray this next prayer, listen, there will be strange impartations and strange testimonies on people. This, these are testimonies coming from heaven. Are we together? I want you to pray it with all your heart. All your heart. All your heart. Listen. Listen. See, that you are part of this great house is no guarantee that you will enjoy the blessings that come. It must be intentional. Proximity is not connection. Are we together? Proximity is not connection. I have tapped into the covenant that God has had with people who have gone higher than me and they have opened me to strange doors. Realms that I know are not realms that are as a result of my personal prayer life. I'm a product of many anointings, many graces, many spiritual possibilities. Please hear what I'm telling you and step into a strange, I show you a deep mystery. Many of you will not appreciate it until you struggle and life whips nonsense out of you. You will come back to this message and it will make sense to you. There are many ministries that are anointed but they may never grow. They have done all they need to do. They have prayed. There are groups. There are all kinds of sincere people around. You've done all you know to do. Listen, you were not designed to do everything as regards your growth by yourself. That's why God put the body. A body has thou prepared. A body has thou prepared. Are we together? There are mysteries. When a Jimmy shared with me the supernatural birth of his wife, I couldn't believe it. In minutes, she had given birth. Case closed. Because there are mysteries you engage. Are we together? Please hear what I'm saying. You see Hope standing. You see Aaron's wife standing. Almost as if they didn't give birth. Right? There is a mystery. 
what you don't know does not mean it cannot work you just don't know how to make it work are we together we are going to pray one last prayer with all your heart every area you know must work in your life listen 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 it pleases the Lord when you have testimonies it pleases the Lord there are some of us certain sicknesses are killing us no man, you've taken drugs you've done everything without your imagination there are there are, there are graces that we have seen sometimes all it takes is recognition to say Lord I tap into this grace I shared with you my story when I went to sow a seed to God's servant Bishop David Oedeko and when I came out the Lord asked me kneel down on the ground bare ground that ground I laid my hands upon it it's not about idolizing altars and all of that no and he said lay your hands on the ground I laid my hands on the bare ground and the Lord said from this day you have entered the overflow anointing are we together it was an old woman who prophesied upon my life and said my son forever you will walk upon gold that's what that mama told me till tomorrow to whether she's a human being or an angel I don't know I bought sugar cane of 50 naira sugar cane of 50 naira changed my destiny forever are we together you join them you will die like them listen to what I'm telling you there are many arrogant people in our society who believe they know what they are doing even when they are quarter to destruction they will still be bragging if you are not seeing results for a long time in your life please calm down and find out what is it thank God for the area you are seeing results but what of the areas where there are no results we are going to pray and you are going to cry to the God of your salvation in one minute and say Lord the unction the grace the unction that must land upon my life now for those doors to open if it did not come through my personal prayer life then I take advantage of this spiritual formation that is in this house I take advantage of this spiritual formation are we praying go ahead and pray I'm about to pray for you but pray the anointing that must come upon my life must come upon my ministry must come upon my prayer group the grace let it come oh god let it come let it come oh god let it come let it come, oh God, let it come. Shakata prakata barada bala kosoto praskate. Em prakata kata tata po kosoto prakata bala grabosh. Makata pakarata kasekete. Em praktas kata baska bosoto bali kata. Pareke teke 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 hallelujah please lift your hands everyone I want to pray for you lift your hands I want to pray for you spirit break out break our walls down Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Lift your hands. Father, I'm about to pray for you. Something will come upon your life right now. And I want you to believe it. In the name that is above all names. Father, it is by your wisdom and by your orchestration you designed the body. No one designed it and gave it a blueprint. You designed the blueprint of the tabernacle in heaven. And you gave Moses and said reproduce it on earth. And the moment they built according to pattern your glory came. 
Lord, there is a spiritual formation in this house that makes for your presence, that makes for influence, that makes for honor, that makes for effective prayer lives. And Lord, I pray that that grace in no small way by covenant, I cry upon you the God of my salvation that tonight, oh God, you remember your covenant with this house and that you change the lives of people. Therefore, right now, I pray, I stretch my hands at the count of three. I pray that this grace will come upon people right now. Father, remember the covenant. One, in the name of Jesus, one, two, three, take it now. 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 Wherever you are, I challenge those mountains. Take the anointing. Challenge the business mountain. Take the anointing. Challenge death. Challenge it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Take it now. Please help them. Inside and outside, I release that grace. The grace that is an incense from the covenant upon this house. Every spirit that has refused to leave your destiny to move forward right now in the name of Jesus. The same way Balaam could not cause Israel. I command that spirit. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the voice of the altar. Be gone now. Be gone now. Be gone now. Be gone now. Shake it. Be gone now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see things leaving the stomach of ladies. Many ladies. This is what I'm saying. Something that looks, I don't know what it looks like, honestly. But I'm seeing it leaving people in strange ways. Lord, let it go. Let it go. Whatever it represents. Now, now, now. Let it go. Every sickness. Let it go. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Heaven come down. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, those on this row. Just lift your hands, those on this row. Because I just saw a wind move here. Very, very serious formation. And the Lord is saying that this grace, this grace is for supernatural results. That's what is happening. I stretch my hands right now. Right now, right now. All through. All through. Right now. I stretch my hands all through this row. Remember the covenant, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Take men to deeper levels. Acceleration. Speed. 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 Spirit break out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out. Hallelujah. One last prayer. Listen. It is not to be abused, but there are many of us, our prophetic dimensions are closed. I need to activate it right now. There are many men of God here. You pray, but your, your perception it's not powerful. Your, 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 your radar. I mean, come on now. You, you can't be a man of God, a woman of God, and your perception. All your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit are deadened. I want to pray for you. There needs to be a prophetic generation. It's not just about prophesying to people. It's about having a blueprint of the details of your destiny released for you. Are we together? Lift your hands. The last prayer point, inside and outside. Please, listen. From you, my dear, hold your hands to this lady. This one. Stand up. I don't know who you people are, but there's something I'm seeing. I'm seeing a line from all of you. It's like you're coming from somewhere. Is that true? Hold your hands something will come upon you just you people now i stretch my hands at the count of three let this strange grace come one 
two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it right now. In a strange way, it begins to burn from within your spirit. You will never be the same. Never, 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 never be the same. Lift your hands. I want to pray for everybody now. Please, I'd like you to pray. There needs to, that prophetic dimension has to come alive. Otherwise, there are limitations. God wants to show you things about your destiny. But you must have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. In the name of Jesus. Father, at the count of three. I'm praying by the unction of the Holy Spirit. Sabataba. The spirit of prophecy. Grace that gives men access to portals in the spirit. At the count of three. Take it now. One. Two. Take it, take it, take it. I open it. I open it. I open it. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I activate dreams. Prophetic dreams. Prophetic encounters, prophetic experiences. Hear the voices of the spirit. Hear the sounds in the spirit. I release upon you that grace for dreams. Not foolish dreams. Prophetic dreams. Receive it now. Right now, dreams, dreams, visions of the night, dreams, strange dreams, visions of the night. Hallelujah. I pray for you. Whatever has made your perception dull, so that you don't pick signals in the spirit. I stand before the God whom I serve and I stretch my hands towards you. May a configuration happen to your spirit man right now. Right now as I speak, I release that grace, strange grace for perception, strange grace for discernment, strange grace for perception, strange grace for discernment, strange grace for perception, strange grace for discernment, strange grace for perception. I pray for you whatever testimony your personal spiritual life has been unable to deliver to you go and return with that testimony now. go and return with that testimony right now go and return with that testimony right now hear me every blessing that should enter your life but has not entered for as long as you come for koinonia and you don't find the chairs empty I command that the same way this house is always full may your destiny be full may your destiny be full may your destiny be full in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of revelation you have been crying for access into the mysteries of the kingdom the spirit of revelation you have been crying for the spirit of revelation you have been crying for every time you pray you cry for revelation i release my faith with you may that unction come now let it come upon you may that unction 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 come upon you right now may it come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace for prayer. You have prayed it. The grace for prayer. You don't just pray. There is a grace. It's not, it's not what you do when you like. I stretch my hand. Koinonia. Upon you. A baptism of fresh grace to travel. Take it. Take it. Take it, take it, shake it, take it, 
the spirit of prayer and supplication the quickening of the Holy Ghost upon your spirit man swallowing up the limitations of your flesh giving you capacity to stay in the place of prayer take it now thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus new prayer altars new prayer altars new prayer altars new prayer altars by the power of the holy ghost new prayer altars in the name of jesus new prayer altars i find them to flames new prayer altars new prayer altars nothing is worthy enough to destroy your prayer life new prayer altars with a strange grace not by trying not by trying there is an unction that empowers a man to swallow up the mortality of his body and stretch in the place of prayer new prayer altars new prayer altars by the power of the Holy Ghost I take away from your life the spirit of slumber in the name of Jesus Father we give you all the praise We have to close. Our time is gone. Give Jesus praise. Lift your hands. And give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Listen. I want to advise you, everyone here. Go and get this series on the secrets of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. And some of these secrets. I want you to listen to them. The media stand is there is free listen to them and pray them into your life don't just listen to them and mock yourself some of us you know you are not doing it you are not doing it you don't listen to these teachings and they don't build it it's not about asking you to listen to my teachings it's about something you need to receive a programming you are doing upon your spirit man that will make you succeed Father, we give you all the praise.